Whoa, what is up, folks? Welcome to the 11th episode of Tales from the Archive on Handle Arbor Games. My name is Zach from Another Letdown Media and the Adjacent Hex Podcast. I'll be your host this evening. Tales from the Archive is the show where we use the medium of Sentinels of the Multiverse, the digital game, to tell a story of some kind. Some will be tales from the actual Sentinels of the Multiverse storylines, and others will be totally original and or based on previous work. For consistency's sake, I do try to match each story up with an existing Sentinel Comics title, as mentioned prior, prior by either Christopher or Adam, or both, and I just whack my hand on the table. Um, but by no means does that necessarily make these stories official canon or real, uh, based on what's being released in the, in the uh, digital and or physical card games. Uh, you can kind of think of this as the Earth-603 Sentinels of the Multiverse. There will often be times where we deliberately make a play that may not make a whole lot of sense strategically, but it contributes in some way to the narrative we've created. We will do our best to win games, but even heroes fall sometimes, and that just makes for great stories. As with all the shows on Handle Arbor Games, we believe in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against that goal is not welcome and will not be tolerated. So... Without any more delay, let's open Ye Oldie Book of the Multiverse and get this party started. I'm noticing in the chat today a little discussion of our wonderful friend, the uh, monorail driver. Uh, I am considering working on a piece of artwork depicting the monorail driver, as we've seen him in our last couple of streams. So if someone can come up with a particularly amusing name, I've already seen Hapless Hal Halifax, which I quite like. But if anybody can uh, offer up some more suggestions, I will definitely incorporate them onto his name tag. Um, so, tonight's story is called In Filters Crosshairs. Um, in the past, I've used Ambuscade as a quick fight, mostly for backup stories, but I wanted to do a spotlight on him now that he has two distinctly unique decks. The team dug through the archive and unearthed a series in which we find... So we see an awful lot of the action movie hero turned big game hunter. In a modern age reboot of the deadliest game miniseries, we find the story told slightly different than many of the other Sentinel Comics titles. This particular series is all drawn from Ambuscade's perspective, in, in other words, first person, uh, so, as he hunts down several of Earth's greatest defenders. Rest assured, however, it's not so bizarre in as to have zero narration, which would kind of be expected. Uh, the narration does take place inside his head, uh, so it's, I'm not necessarily going to do the French accent. I apologize. I am partially fluent in French. I say partially because I can read and uh, I, can, I can read and understand it. I can't very well speak or uh, write it, um, and so it can I confuse accents in my head and it ends up just sounding either Irish or Russian, which is very odd. Um, so the first panel of the book is just black. It's a black square. Uh, the caption, a green narration box with a faint image of Ambuscade's helmet in the background, reads. Filter is not famous for treating their operatives with much concern or care. Why should I expect them to extend any additional courtesy to their private contracts? Two ovals break the blackness in the second panel, revealing a fuzzy image of Insula Primalis. I've made something of a name for myself in the hitman business. And now, apparently, even Filter's best operative can't take down the alien Tempest, and they've called me in to get the job done. The money's right, if too good. And sometimes, it's nice to have a new target for a change. Ambuscade begins to trudge through the jungle undergrowth. I just wish they hadn't insisted on knocking me out and sending me back here, back here of all places. The rampaging dinosaurs and unpredictable lava strikes make working on Insula Primalis notoriously difficult. Every once in a while, he stops to set a trap. Filter's target is the alien Tempest. I've fought with Tempest before. I know the Moranian ambassador operates, how the Moranian ambassador operates, and yet time after time, he and his allies get the better of me. Ambuscade pauses for a moment and looks around him. This time I'm ready. He looks up into the jungle and notices four of Earth's heroes patrolling nearby, clearly there to observe the Citadel of the Sun. I'm prepared for this inevitability. I've lost to these so-called heroes too many times. This time, I would be the ultimate hunter. So, tonight's story takes starts us out with ultimate, I, you can't see that because it's under the overlay, ultimate ambuscade, versus Raw, Tempest, Omnitron X, and Super Scientific Tachyon, uh, continuing our theme of using SS Tachyon, uh, as you saw in Agents of Stream, and I believe Dolphins Dive as well. I was unfortunately not able to be there for that. Um, and we're starting out on Insula Primalis. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's get this party started. Of 
course, we are facing Ultimate Ambuscade tonight to start with. And my coaster just got stuck to my Boiled for Safety mug. That was rude. Mojo Gamer, VGB, new subscriber. We love seeing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. All right, so here we go. Ra, starting out with Drawn to the Flame, Excavation, Living Conflagration, and Scorched Earth. Tempest, Cleansing Downpour, Flash Flood, Reclaim from the Deep, and Vicious Cyclone. Omnitron X has a Bioengineering Beam, Disruptive Flechettes, Rocket Punch, and Technological Advancement. And Super Scientific Tachyon starts with Hot Goggles, Lightning Reflexes, Nimble Strike, and Synaptic Interruption. Now, of course, uh, I should uh, pause for a moment and just... Well, let's get through Ambuscade's deployment here. And I will quickly open up... Okay, so uh, Ambuscade, we are doing Ultimate Ambuscade tonight. Um, his... Wow, good gravy. All right. His, ultimate, his advanced side says reduce damage dealt to villain targets. That's everything by one. And his challenge mode says at the start of the game, all trap cards are in Ambuscade's deck are turned face up. In other words, he has been busy setting traps around Insula Primalis, uh, getting ready for his climactic battle with his with his targets. Whenever a trap card would be discarded, the first card of the first the top card of the villain deck is played, then the trap card is discarded. Whenever the villain trash is shuffled into the villain card in the villain deck, all traps are turned face up. So basically, all the traps are getting reset. Every time. Uh, highest HP, we will send that at Tempest. Because that is his target, after all. Uh, most cards in play, again, is going to be Tempest, because that is his target. Uh, Tempest not a target here, so Omnitron. Time to take some damage from the automated turret. Which, in itself, is effectively one of his traps. Um, you will find out where the automated, automated turret comes into play in between games. So, Ra... Starting out, um, I mean, dealing damage seems like a pretty good place to start. It's only going to be one, but Ambuscade is a target right now, so we will go ahead and level the damage in his face. And continue leveling damage in his face. Maybe not the best, but it will do to start. Um, now, there's no environment cards in play. Reclaim, not super helpful here. Vicious Cyclone. Really not spectacular. Cleansing Downpour does seem to be very good, and Tempest's base power is not doing a whole lot, so mitigating some of the damage that uh, is being leveled at the heroes right now seems pretty good to start with. It's difficult to hit the heroes when they're healing like that. Must find a way to, d to disarm that. Uh, to disarm the alien. Um, those are not ongoing cards, so that's not help. Although, um, so it looks like Omnitron's going to be mitigating a lot of the uh, environment, but Rocket Punch seems like a pretty good place to start here. It's one more ability to level damage at Ambuscade. Um, one damage is not going to actually do anything, so we're just going to absorb it here. Tachyon. Now, Synaptic Interruption seems pretty good. Um, because redirecting damage seems pretty excellent. Especially based on the fact that he, his damage is not being reduced. Uh, but we're going to start with HUD Goggles, because that just seems like a great idea. Then we'll play the Synaptic Interruption. Uh, and then we will experiment on herself. What's this? It appears she's running experiments on her own body. Um, not that it's going to do anything, but we will play that card. And Sonic Vortex will deal two to Ambuscade. And I think we have at least one other target. Well, maybe. No, I guess we don't. I thought we had two burst cards in there, but I guess not. Hail just dissolves. In the, yes. Jungle heat is, is impacting the Grievous Hailstorm. Okay, there's an enraged T-Rex banging around. That is rude. 
All right, ambuscade. All right, charge attacks. All right, so we have things to um, uh, to mitigate that problem. Um, Um, Tempest, he's still taking shots at Tempest, that is exactly what his plan is. That is his target after all, his intended. Um, really not that, not super useful, or Scorched Earth not really not super useful. Um, nothing in the trash yet, but there will be soon. That's not helpful. So Solar Flare it is. And uh, so that's increasing damage dealt by Ra by two. Just uh, in the meantime. Okay, we will take the four damage here, um, but we're gonna keep an eye on that. Um, Flash Flood, two environment cards, so that's not what we wanna be doing here. Uh, that seems quite good. Yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll start things off with a lightning slash five for four damage. And then we will continue to the cl the cleansing downpour. Tempest is channeling the the energy of the forest or the of the jungle. He's making the humidity work for them instead of against them. Um So Flechettes is a consideration here. Um, Bioengineering Beam also a good consideration, especially, I mean, it's very flavorful. He is attacking, uh, looks like, I guess, the Velociraptor pack, but um, just based on the fact that the, like, we're not targeting the device. Is that my cat? We're not targeting uh, the his, his devices. We're really just targeting him for the moment. Um, the Bioengineering Beam... It just seems like a better call here. And we're just going to go ahead and destroy that T-Rex before it deals any more damage. And then level the two right, or the one, right at him. Um, Tachyon next. Hypersonic Assault seems really, really good, except for the fact that we can't hit him because of the uh, ultimate bit. Um... Man, if only we had something to amplify damage. We don't. Uh, well, let's start by let's let's start by doing lightning reflexes, allowing us to play a couple of cards. Nimble Strike draws us a card. Uh, it doesn't actually do any damage, so whatever. But uh, well, I guess draw, draw another card. It seems fine. Okay. All right. That seems fine. And we can still play another card. So I I mean, we're gonna continue drawing cards and binning bursts. Okay, there's one, two, and three. We're gonna discard one of those and one of these, unfortunately, um, because we're gonna play out Fleet of Foot next turn. And we're gonna continue experimenting on Tachyon. Uh, she does indeed have the better option, so we're going to continue to draw cards and not do any damage. But the synaptic interruption doesn't come in back into play, which allows us to uh, mitigate some, some stuff. The robot just damp just vaporized that T-Rex. This could be more, da more dangerous than I thought. Um, primordial plant life. When this plant card, when this plant enters play, each card may each hero may destroy one ongoing card. Anyone who does takes two. Anybody who does not it takes four. So let's take a look at what's uh, sitting around here. Um, he can dis he can get rid of one. He really shouldn't. He can, although it's not ideal. He's at full, almost full health. Um, synaptic interruption would just redirect the damage. So we're going to go ahead and uh, Ra's going to destroy one. He's going to destroy the um, living conflag. 
Tempest is not going to. It's going to take the full brunt. Omnitron, nope, is not going to. Tachyon is not going to, so we're, we're, we're good here. Um, and she's going to redirect that right to, Ra, uh, to Ambuscade's face. And that goes away. All right, here comes Ambuscade. All right. Not ideal, but we'll take it. Uh, okay, well, yep. I've programmed my turrets to go after the alien. Hopefully they'll continue to long enough for me to take him down. Um, one target, one fire. It's really not that spectacular. Um, I think we're just going to excavate. There's only two cards, but that's fine. They're not particularly heinous. And uh, very bottom goes that. All right, well, that's an interesting uh, way of programming that. All right, so the Blazing Tornado will definitely come out next turn. It'll amplify us from one damage a turn to two. Uh, and then, of course, Solar Flare is still active. Um, it's... Okay. Summon Staff. Very nice. Um, we actually are going to take the damage here. It's going to end up being only two, based on what... Uh, um, putting something on the top of the villain deck seems very, very good. Uh, especially seeing as charged attacks, like just putting charged attacks back on. What happened to my gun? My gun just disappeared. I'll have to re I'll have to go back and find another one. All right, so here's the cleansing downpour again. We're gaining us back a little bit of hit points. All right, uh, flechette's not useful here yet. Um, mitigating projectile damage seems very, very strong. Um, I believe these are, yeah, these are all dealing projectile damage. So if I go ahead and if they start mitigating projectile damage, this could really turn the tide. All right, which one's the one that is it? Um, yep, a blade of coating goes into play. Ah, another flechettes. Very nice. Um, Bioengineering beam not helpful here, so we will rocket punch. For plink, plink, plink. Not much we can do about that. Alright. Um, nothing helpful there. Fleet of foot seems like a very strong play. Tachyon's accelerated. This could get ugly. We'll go ahead and supersonic response. Seems quite strong. Uh, we do have a play to make. That's going to be useful later on. That's not useful. Hypersonic, not helpful at all. Subject is using projectile ammunition. Engage Kevlar, Kevlar plating protocols. Nice. Yes, yes. Words appear on, on Omnitron's eyepiece. Subject is using projectile ammunition. Engaging Kevlar plating protocols. Uh, Jimmy the Cannon, this is the super scientific tachyon. Here, I'll make it bigger for you. Uh, her power is experiment. Reveal the top, the bottom two cards of a deck. If they share a keyword, put them into play. If not, discard them. Uh, it's very cool. One of my favorite. It's probably my favorite Tachyon variant. Although an argument could be made for Team Leader Tachyon. Also very, very cool. And here's the here's the power for you. Uh, she will continue to experiment on herself. All right, and then she, unfortunately she did not hit there, so she will just discard those. I think I like uh, team leader. Ta or, um, if I'm just going for 
reliability, yes, team leader Tachyon is uh, is pretty rad. But um, I, I like the sort of gambly nature of um, Super Scientific. Uh, that's just uh, wait. Oh no, can't target Omnitron with that. Um, Darren, yeah, you're not wrong. They do just seem to be straight up upgrades. Um, that said, I do like base Tachyon as well. So we're gonna go ahead and summon staff. Yep, we're going to go ahead and play the staff of Ra to augment our damage just a little bit further and gain a little health back. That'll allow us to keep the solar flare out for another turn. Uh, and we will continue to level damage at him. In the name of Agent Damage! All the damage! Uh, yep, yeah, we'll take it again. Here. I know that's five damage instead of four, but that's the price you pay for good cards. Uh, draw three cards doesn't seem bad. Destroy up to two environment cards seems fine. But there's only one target, and I think Omnitron can do it and just do it better. So we're going to go ahead and Aquatic Correspondence. Our target has moved over to the, to the, to the pond. He seems to be communing with the fish. Oh, some good draws here off Tempest. And we'll go ahead and do the Cleansing Downpour again. Staying at good health. Um, Disruptive doesn't seem like the worst here. Um, I don't have any, uh, that's just not particularly strong, Electro Deployment Unit, um, that actually seems pretty okay, Matriarch with Legacy, Leap from the Front, Superhuman Fortitude, and Expatriate, the amount of clicking I had to do every time was, <laughs> yeah, that, Matriarch is a tough one, uh, Christopher and Adam have said in the past that she really only had one big story as Matriarch, uh, but I'm very, very much looking forward to being able to play her on the stream as Harpy. I have a great story written, or outlined, I should say. I don't really write things until, well, Thursday night, maybe? Thursday, Friday night? Um, just because it gives me enough time to sort of process and really work through my, uh, my maps. I'm going to go ahead and do Electro Deployment Unit here. Uh, disruptive flash Flechettes would also be a consideration, but there is only one ongoing out. Um, and we will, of course, destroy that Velociraptor pack and angle a point of damage at Ambuscade. I agree, Darren. Uh, but you do have to get you, you do have to level some some semblance of dumb luck against Matriarch. I think um, nothing really great here. There's no value off of that. Although, actually. Um, Blinding speed can get rid of charged attacks, so we will go ahead and do that. Yep, get rid of, get gone. Um, I don't have a second card to play, really, because that doesn't hit anything, and we're just kind of waiting and hoping we can aggro him down enough to, uh, to let Sucker Punch deal with it. So we're going to just keep that in the hand. I've seen her Sucker Punch villains before. Got to watch out for that. All right. Um, I don't really want to do either of those. Rude. <laughs> Seems like a waste, but whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing happens. Um, so that that happens. Oh well. Not the strongest turn for Tachyon, but there you are. Okay, um, hold on. So Volcanic Interruption, sorry, Volcanic Eruption. Uh, oh dear, okay. Ah, the PCD. Okay, so now we need to, uh, now we got some problem. <laughs> the PC, the personal cloaking device, they've dealt me too much damage. I need to go dark. That will come there. Alright, so Volcanic Eruption says 
Uh, if someone skips their entire turn, destroy the card. Um, I kind of want to leave... Oh, well, Omnitron can just get rid of that, though. So that just seems better. Also, if Omnitron gets rid of that, it turns on Tachyon. Uh, the... Um, her her hypersonic assault things like that so obsidian field really just kind of helps us um, it might anyway we've got we've got some choices to make here inferno seems quite good to just sort of get rid of things the charge attacks is gone so go ahead and start aggroing the PCD. I'll just get that the heck out of here. Uh, hand cannon will go away. Seems quite strong. Can't touch him, but I mean, whatever. Uh, we will stop dealing damage there. And then um, we'll go ahead and finish off that PCD. Um, I think Solar Flare may have to go away. Ah, well, what's he at? 16. This is going to take 5, so he's going to go to 13 once we heal him up, excuse me, with Tempest. Uh, we'll take the damage here. Maybe not, may, may not be ideal, but uh, nope, he's not going to get the rest of his turn either um, because Ball Lightning will take care, or Chain Lightning. I keep saying Ball Lightning because I used to play Magic. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, chain Lightning will take care of the automated turrets. Um, won't hit Ambuscade, but that's all right. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and Chain Lightning. Getting rid of his stuff seems quite good. Darren, if you want to see uh, increased challenge mode, uh, challenge modes more often, Dolphin's Dive is really, uh, really the place for you to be. I don't tend to do challenge modes very often because they make storytelling a little bit more difficult. This one just kind of worked, so that's why I went with Ultimate. Um. I like drawing cards, which is kind of my favorite favorite three words. Um, Omnitron is not going to skip the rest of his turn, but he is going to bio. In well, yeah, he's going to bioengineering beam that down. Um, oh, do they not? I hadn't even looked. I thought they did. Maybe I'm just wrong. Uh, so slip through time is going to be... Ah, uh, that could be it. Uh, I know that... I, I think Christopher does have some input on the, in the... Cha in fact, he might just write the challenge modes himself. So uh, that could be... Why those haven't been written yet. At least JZC is paying attention. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize it's an obsidian field from the trash. That's that changes things. Discard a plating card. If you do, uh, well, he really doesn't have. What's technological advancement? Search your deck for a plating or a component. I can put more components into play. That seems quite strong. Um. Three targets, one, not helping. That seems good. Yeah, well, well, is there anything that deals more? That is also good. We're going to go ahead and innervation right here. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, because I'm never on the ball. No, I'm not. That's not true. I sometimes know what's going on. Not often. Uh, I really doesn't do any good. Uh, so we will go ahead and do this. 
I think the right call is Tempest. Oh, wait a minute. You know what would be the right call? Try this again. Watch me make mistakes. All right. Yep, bioengineering beam. Um, and then we will reveal the top card of Ambuscade's deck. Uh, we will throw that away. I think. I don't know. That could be wrong. Um, that's not helpful. That's not helpful. None of these are helpful. It actually makes sense to double draw here while we are... Okay, pushing the limits. Good. Oh, there's the light speed barrage. That's a nice draw. For those watching at home, that's a nice draw. All right, all right, V pack. That's rude. I didn't. I didn't need that. Their robot is matching me arsenal for arsenal. Okay, all right. There's the first trap. Um. It's uh, energy damage. Unfortunately, I don't think he's re reducing that right now. Uh, Tachyon's going to be pretty okay. Oh my goodness. Alright, Sonic Mine. That's fine. Alright, that's fine. That's fine. Another Sonic Mine. That's fine. <laughs> Alright. He's starting to go off. And there's the PCD back. Alrighty. And the reactive plating. Come on, turn the page. Owie. RIP components indeed. Good thing we got them out, right? <laughs> um... Boy, oh boy. Blazing Tornado seems like a decent move. Okay. Now we do not want to take damage off of that. Ra is not looking pretty particularly happy here. Um, I think we can put something on top of the deck, though. That seems good. Uh, a sonic mine, putting a sonic mine on top of the deck seems quite strong. Non indestructible. Yep. And that just sort of preps us for the next turn because we're going to get rid of the uh, PCD my clever traps are working to take down that irritating robot so we know what he's going to play next turn question is how much damage can we deal to him alright um two, there are no ongoings in right now. Uh That is not useful. <laughs> like at all. So we're going to go ahead and skip. <laughs> Robot confused. Does not compute. Alright, so we can uh, whack the PCD with Tachyon. Um, I'm curious. Okay, perfect. So we are going to sucker punch the PCD, I think. Hold on. 
We have two card plays. Yeah. So sucker punch the PCD. Come on. There we go. Now reactive plating is a consideration. Um, that is true. We could hypersonic the mine. Problem with not on. Problem is not on advanced. Uh, we can't deal a single point of damage uh, because his card, Jimmy, says. Uh, oh wait, he's flipped. So actually, we totally could. Is there? Um. Yeah, uh, can we? Does that work? I think it works. But is it the right play here, though? Screw it, I'm doing it. Okay. Um. Yeah, so the rest of it's just whatever. Jimmy the Cannon, play of the evening so far. Uh, we will experiment. Tachyon. Aw, oh, man. That stinks. But we can do a fair amount of damage this next turn, so... Fingers crossed, folks. Okay, alright. Doesn't take effect yet. Now he will flip over and a Sonic Mine will be played, and that should be it. Yep, he'll do that. All right, let's see. Can we deal 23 damage in a single turn? Well, Fire Blast seems like a good place to start. Um, Tachyon's moving so fast, it shorts out my personal cloaking device. I'm vulnerable. It was flame spike? Um, hmm. They look ready to strike me down. I must think of something hastily. Or with, with the utmost haste. Flame spike does equal two powers. Two power not necessarily my favorite option. I, it's, it's possible that I just punted the game, but... That's what I was thinking, is the damage reduction is really the the biggest consideration here. We shall see. We shall see. Um, no components in play right now. Disruptive, destroy up to two, and then everything takes one. You see, that's not good. That's not helpful. <laughs> Jay ZC is wearing a silly hat. Oh man, I wish I had. I have a really doofy hat downstairs, and I should have put it on. Honestly, I'm not seeing a whole lot that's super duper useful here. Well, rocket punch isn't isn't exclusive. I can put a second one in. Why not? BioNG, Pterodactyl Thief is gone. I can only deal some, and it doesn't deal him anything. So that's just not helpful. Yep, no damage to Ambuscade. Happens. Um, well, let's see. 
the light speed hits for 10, putting him to 4. Oh yeah, that's probably true. Um, not helpful. Not helpful. Well, maybe we can hit. It, if we get lucky, not too many cards left. Come on! All right. Um, so draw three, discard two, then play Fleet of Foot, which says play a card. Yeah, okay, this could do it. One, two, and three, not useful. Discard one and two. Play that. Okay, okay, okay. Hurt! Uh,. Um, that's well. Yeah, DR doesn't do anything or prevents us from doing anything to ambuscade there. Um, so we'll just play the research grant out. So we got to weather one more turn. All right, Obsidian Field. That is frustrating. Come on. Don't get bad. Don't get bad. Hold baby. All right, all right, all right. That's fine. That's fine. Yep, yep. It's fine. No problem. Uh, everything takes a bit. All right. Not ideal. Okay. All right, all right, all right. So, imbued fire is a consideration. Um, what's he? He's gonna take damage off the reactive plating, but maybe that's just success. Um, so we're gonna summon staff for the extra card play. And Flash of the Sun God, immune to fire damage. That's what is the reactive? That's projectile damage. Oh, energy damage. Oh, that's true. Uh, well, no, because the um, the reactive plating. Oh, oh, that's true. Yep, you're right. So here we go. Success! The heroes of Earth think they have brought me to my knees, but this is only part of a bigger plan. The ultimate hunter is prepared for every possibility. Ra approaches Ambuscade with fire in his eyes and demands, How many more traps did you lay out for us? Without warning, the speeding form of Tachyon is tossed aside and into a tree. She slumps to the ground with an audible thud head first. Tempest rushes over to help her and Ra slams Ambuscade in the gut with his staff. Okay, that one hurt. But then being slammed in the belly by a god isn't something that most people have to deal with. Come on, where is it? Unnoticed by the heroes, a small green and blue drone appears at Ambuscade's side. Ah, there you are, mon ami. He shifts his weight slightly as the drone releases an electric pulse into the ground, sending the heroes flying in all directions. Tempest, immune to the effects of electricity, rushes to tend to Omnitron X, who has, sus has sustained significant damage. I need to act quickly before they recover. Tachyon especially can be dangerous, even incapacitated. Ambuscade gathers up the heroes and loads them into a filter-issued spacecraft. They won't be out for long. I need to set and lock the autopilot, 
and then make myself scarce to tend to my injuries. Unfortunately, Filter doesn't like people to know the exact location of their interdimensional holding facility they call the block. Too much liability, I suppose. I've pulled information from as many of my contacts as I can get a hold of, and the best I can do is point the craft in the general direction of the Enclave of the Endlings. We see Ambuscade messing with the controls of the spacecraft. He looks around at a pile of unconscious heroes and gets up. Nursing his wounds, he opens up a cargo hold packed with medical supplies. All I have to do is conceal the craft, easy, and wait for someone from Filter to contact me. Ambuscade sh shuts himself in the cargo bay, and we see the next few panels play out from behind a grate in the floor hatch. Tachyon wakes first and begins bustling around the craft, trying to figure out where they are. Tempest and Ra eventually join her in the cockpit, attempting to wrestle the controls back into responsiveness. Fools. True, this stop will buy them some time to escape, but most likely, the Endlings will simply keep them at bay long enough for Filter to pick up the alien they seek and escort him to their facility. Embuscade leans backward and relaxes a bit. We can see the action as the heroes crash land at the Enclave of the Endlings and deboard. So, game two. Moving on. The hero team remains, of course, the same as it tends to in Tales from the Archive. Come on. Get down there. And it goes like that, I believe. The environment, of course is the Enclave of the Endlings. And hot off the the presses that, I, that they call the letters page, we found out, well, I, I guess we already knew it, but uh, we found out that the villain Deadline is one of the Endlings. I guess we already knew that. Um, so we are going to fight Deadline. He is, of course, the last of his race. Um... And he is, in this case, defending the, en the Enclave of the Endlings. Uh, deadline. And we are doing just standard deadline. Uh, no, no funky business this time. So, uh, here we go. Emidus is ready for his close-up. So these quotes, of course, have no bearing on the, uh, the plot here. Ra this time is starting out with... Nope, come on. Flame Spike, a brace of living conflagration and the staff of Ra. Tempest is starting out with Cleansing Downpour, Elemental Subwave Inducer, Gene Bound Shackles, and Vicious Cyclone. Omnitron X is starting out with Elemental Exo Chassis, uh, Focus Plasma Cannon, Gaussian Coil, Gaussian Coil Blaster, and Innervation Ray. And the Super Scientific Tachyon, HUD Goggles, Lightspeed Barrage, Nimble Strike, and Pushing the Limits. Um... Deadline has 80 hit points. Uh, Atomic Englave is, is put into play. Villain deck is shuffled. If there are more three or more catastrophes in play, he flips over. Otherwise, play the top card of the villain deck at the end of the turn. Yay. At the start of the villain turn, if there are no catastrophes, he flips back over. At the end of the villain turn, all environments are destroyed. And, ugh, and the environment trash is shuffled into the environment deck. Then all catastrophes are destroyed, and Deadline deals a bunch of damage. And there better not be no cards left in the environment deck because then we lose. That could be bad. So, damage, 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 damage. I think. Let me just check his backside. Yep. So, all right. 80 damage as fast as we can. Atomic Englave. There it is. Okay, there's a first catastrophe. There's our second catastrophe. All right, let's start. Uh, yeah, uh, deadlines. Deadlines not uh, not easy, and I love fighting in Wagner Mars base. I, let me be honest here. Um, well, I mean, might as well start out with a bang. Yeah, the deadline is saving the endlings by throwing them at people. All right, so Tempest's base power is uh, is live here, although Cleansing Downpour is still a possibility. I feel like plot-wise, it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know what the cloud cover looks like on the Enclave of the Endlings. <laughs> so... Hmm. Um... Gene 
Gene bound. Oh, with the highest HP. So yes, that's perfect. Yeah, fastball special. <laughs> um, I was reading Dead Spider-Man Deadpool the other day, and I loved the. There's this really goofy way that they uh, they did a sp fastball special. I was super super happy with it. As a uh, giant comic book dork. Seems dece. What do we got? Um, sure. In play. Perfect. Good card. Good card. All right, Tachyon. Starting with the hot goggles. And we will nimbly strike. At deadline. Oop, I think I went too far. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the. I just bought a brand new mouse. I'm not super used to it. I kind of like my old one better, I'll be honest, except for the fact that I had to change the battery at least twice a stream. So I got one that uh, doesn't use batteries. Oh, man. All right, well. Yes. Uh, that one was recent, actually. That was also Spider-Man Deadpool. It was, it was bizarre, but it was good. I liked it. Just swinging for the fences here. I mean, we all know that Deadpool does have a giant man crush on Spider-Man. Hey, look, it's uh, Black Fist. Corruption. No, well, I guess we're just all taking some lumps here. <laughs> we're going to continue to take some lumps. But Corruption is apparently trying to help us a little bit. Uh, start of the turn, two players must put one card from their hand on top of their deck. Then, oh boy, the two non-villain targets with the highest HP. That's rude. Um, on top of their deck? Man. All right, well. Sure. I mean, Tachyon's playing a bunch of stuff off the bottom of her deck. Yes. Deadline is not happy with Ambuscade having crash landed here. And again, Ambuscade is resting right now, so you're not going to hear a whole lot of uh, narration from him in this case. So much rude. Okay, there's the third catastrophe. He's gonna flip over. He will destroy a bunch of stuff. Well, here we go. He's definitely throwing the endlings out there. Yep, I'll take the, some lumps, like goblin grenades. Yeah, I mean, you know. Okay, well that was certainly a thing. Um, that's not nothing. We're going to start out here. Living Conflagration. Allowing two semi-permanent power sources. Well, think about, like, uh, Blue Go to the face. Like, that seems really bad. Deadline's just fastball, multi-fastball multi specialing endlings right and left. Yansa Videro is not happy right now. Subwave inducers coming out. That's it, go to your room. 
Agreed. Okay, all right, all right. That's pretty good. That's a good draw. Everybody see that? That was uh, Ball Lightning. Seems pretty good. Um, especially considering that those Catastrophes are indeed um, ongoing cards. Focus Plaz Cannon. Uh, not the worst option. Um, is this energy damage? So yeah, we'll definitely Exo Chassis. Seems quite strong. Um, I mean, Raw and Tempest both have car like one shots that deal damage. I'm gonna just keep. Okay, yep. Let's let's do that. That seems. Oh, that seems real good. And we're just gonna go ahead and. Ah, uh... oh, but imbued fire though. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and view fire. May not be the the most Jeremy play ever, but I just I kind of like that. Especially considering that Nimble Strike is an option here. Come on, get in there. View fire, just such a good card. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. Um. I'm actually just going to hang on to pushing the limits here. It's a good option for top decking if we need to. Because she's going to experiment on herself. You know, she's going to discard both of those. That's not helpful. But uh, there you are. Okay, all right. Not the worst draw ever. Groom. Or Grum. I don't know if he's Grum or Groom or, or what. Um, Ra has st staves of Ra to heal back up. So he's going to go ahead and take that lump sum. All right, Deadline flips back over. Plays a Catastrophe. Yep, he's going to play the top card of the de deck. It is a Relic. It's the Pandemonium Key. That's annoying. Yonsa Videro is very angry now. Uh, let's take a look at the Pandemonium Key. Each time an environment target enters play each turn, play the top card of the villain deck. That's that's rough, just going to be honest. Uh, but here comes the Fire Burst. Fire Blast, Fire Burst, Fire Thing. For 7 damage, leveled straight at deadline. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. I mean, 2 fire damage or 1 fire damage to draw a card. Yeah, Pandemonium Key, <laughs> not good. <laughs> it's real bad. All the endlings to the face. Come on. Uh, energy damage. Well, there, I mean, we're not out of the, we're not uh, we're not totally doomed yet, so we'll we'll see. Yep, we are not going to do that. He's down to thirty, folks. Fire damage. Fire damage. Fire damage. Fire damage. All the fire damage. When in doubt, go face! Thank you, Techno Magus. Appreciate that. Ooh, lightning slash. Me likey. All right. Everything is on fire. The Enclave of the Endlings is just literally on fire. Um... None of these take, take effect immediately, but the more stuff we have that can potentially deal damage at this juncture just seems good. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I love it. Um, do we go Tempest or Raw here? Raw hit last time. We're going to go Tempest this time. See what, he, see what he's got. 
All right, yeah, we'll put that in play. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Tachyon, what are you bringing to the table today? Ah, uh, lightning reflexes seems pretty okay. Well, no, not really. Well, I mean, eh. The problem is, like, we've only got one card that's impacting the board state. Um, everything else is just kind of fluff. I kind of just want to double draw. But then... Uh, that's, that's just so many cards. Oh, but drawing an extra card off pushing the limits seems quite good. Uh, and Lightspeed Barrage, there's only five cards, but that's, I mean, that's not nothing. I'm going to push. I want to draw cards. I'm going to keep Lightning Reflexes for the next turn. I think that's what, I, yeah, just for extra card draw. She's at pretty decent HP, although, it, um, oops, there's a cat under my feet who should not be there. It's not the irritating one. Uh, they're both irritating. I love the cats. Okay, all right. This is where it gets a little hairy. Enclave. Handling Refuge. If there are four more environment cards in this in play, destroy this card. Okay, all right. Uh, this is melee damage. Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, hell is right. <laughs> uh, so, putting cards on top of their deck is going to be Omnitron. Based on the fact that we have an extra Gaussian Coil Blaster. And, um... Ra has extra cards to sack too. Well, that sure was a thing. All right, yep, there's another catastrophe. Foolish hurricanes. Okay, there's trip catastrophes. Turn the page. Thank you. All right. Um, so Inferno is a consideration here. That's a lot of damage. Flame Spike allows two powers... Um, I'm an Inferno. See any reason not to get rid of his attacky thing? Orbo's kind of irritating, and Grum is certainly not a, a friend. Um, we're gonna stop dealing damage there because it's time to use some powers, or a power at least. We're gonna kill him dead, folks. Okay, there's the staff. We put it there. We knew it was coming. Uh, lightning Slash is definitely a, a thing here. This, this deadline lost his toys. <laughs> Imbued Fire is so much fun. Um, okay, that seems quite good. He's a 13. We can probably finish this here if we... Lightning Slash. Change that to fire damage. When Deadline loses his toys, Deadline is an unhappy camper. This actually might just do it. No, not quite. Uh, yeah. Sure. Pandemonium Key's gone. Grum is gone. If fire doesn't work, you're not using it properly. Love it. Put that on a t-shirt.
Okay, there we go. And Omnitron wins it for us. Deadline has unsuccessfully defended the, the Enclave of the Endlings. Tempest sure does bring down the Firestorm. Apparently, when you bring a grievous or uh, some kind of hailstorm into the Enclave of the Endlings, it just rains fire instead. Um, possibly, Jimmy, but I wasn't paying that much attention, I'll be honest. About time they finished up. By now, those heroes have realized that this is not their intended destination and simply a stop along the way. Out of the viewport, we see another filter spacecraft materialize and land on the planet's surface. A large band of filter agents pour out and surround the heroes. I guess it's time. Ambuscade opens up his hiding place in the cargo bay and emerges as one of the agents breaks off from the main group with a large manila envelope. As the figure gets closer, we start to notice that it is none other than Sergeant Steele. I don't like this man. He's arrogant, rude, and demeaning to everyone who crosses his path. Lucky for me, he's not above outsourcing jobs he's too lazy or too incompetent to handle. Sergeant Steele approaches the bridge of the ship and reaches for Ambuscade's hand. Excellent work, Morrow! I'm especially impressed that you managed to get your hands on three alien sympathizers as well. We can't have their kind wandering around, riling people up to take the invader's side. You know all I care about is my pay, Steele. I presume that envelope contains the money we agreed on? What, this? No, no. This is a warrant for your arrest. Sergeant Steele clubs Ambuscade in the head, and the panel goes black. I should have seen that coming. Filter hasn't the reason nor the resources to make good on the offer they made me. Ambuscade wakes up in a cell. If I know anything about the block, I know the heroes will make a scene and will break out. But this was unexpected. Ambuscade looks down at his feet, where his drone materializes. It displays a list of inmates currently being held at the block. What a terrible list of... The next panel displays two names. Cassandra Lilia, Alexander Sarev. This could be our ticket out of here. Ambuscade looks up as alarms begin to sound. The panels alternate with a red tint. Time to go. So, of course, our final game is, of course, a team game starring Ambuscade, again. He's back. Filter is equal opportunity jerks. That's that's a kind of a better title than what I put there. Um, behind the scenes, I spent almost an hour trying to come up with a decent title yesterday. I was really struggling. The environment, of course. The block. And our hero team remains, of course, the same. The heroes have started to create a scene, cause a scene. And I'm going to refill my drink so we can boil, filter for safety. Yansa comes in with a fire extinguisher. Yansa Videro, the last firefighter. Alrighty. Let's do it. Steel is quite the happiest looking villain. I mean, he's a giant equal opportunity jerk. But, uh, there you are. So, now of course you'll notice that uh, since Ambuscade lost the last two games, I didn't upgrade him to anything. He, uh, he's just, he's having a rough day. So, Ra is going to start out with Flame Barrier, Flame Spike, Flesh of the Sun God, and Summon Staff. I know what we're doing first turn! Tempest, Ball Lightning, Grievous Hailstorm, and a Brace of Lightning Slashes. Interesting, interesting. <clears throat> Omnitron X, a brace of disruptive flechettes, kind of cool. A singularity and a slip through time. And super scientific tachyon, hypersonic assault, a brace of light speed barrage, and sonic vortex. Um, since Jimmy has mentioned that his, it is his first time seeing the, villain, the team villain fights, I'm going to bring the cards up and take a look at them. Ambuscade, slaughterhouse leader. 
Uh, we're going to put a Nemesis into play. Anything else is shuffled back into this deck. At the end of his turn, he's going to deal every tar uh, each target next to a Snare three melee damage. If nothing is dealt that way, play the top card of his deck. Cassandra Lilia, a.k.a. Cassandra Lilia, a.k.a. Ermin, uh, says at the start of the game, Ermin enters play Con Artist Extraordinaire sign up. Constant Prattle is put into play. Uh, chat, you're up. Make her talk. Um, at the end of Ermin's turn, the top card of Ermin's villain deck is revealed. If it is a one-shot, put it into play. If not, it is discarded, and Ermin deals the hero target with the second lowest HP to melee damage. Uh, Proletariat says, at the start of the game, Proletariat enters play the Everyman side up. Two cards named Proletariat are put into play. The villain deck is shuffled. Whenever this card would be dealt non-psychic damage, very important there, redirect that damage to the clone card with the, high, the, with the lowest HP. Buster, get down from there. Thank you very much. At the end of his turn, this card, yeah, deals t damage to, to itself, basically. Sergeant Steel! At the start of the game, Sergeant Steel enters play Filter Leader side up. Cards are revealed from the top of, the Sergeant, top of Sergeant Steel's deck until two agents are revealed and put into play. Other revealed cards are shuffled back into his deck. Alien abilities are activated by activated are activated by this card and cards from Sergeant Steel's deck. At the end of Sergeant Steel's turn, the alien ability with the uh, Actually, you know what? I'm gonna call that the Paul ability. Not to be confused with Paul Bender, but uh, Paul, the alien played by Seth Rogen in the movie Paul. Uh, at the end of the at the end of Sergeant Steel's turn, the Paul ability with, of the villain agent with the highest HP is activated. Then Sergeant Steel deals the hero target with the highest HP to projectile damage. Let's get this party started, Magman. Ermin, constant prattle. The uh, proletariat. Herman would like to sell a subscription to the Watchtower. Mega Gunner. An Infiltrationist. Odd. Revolts. There's a snare. Uh, fewest snare cards. Whenever this he that hero's player draws a card, each target in... The this play area deals itself to melee damage, then destroy this card. Interesting. Uh, well, his target is, of course, Tempest, so even though he's already... Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, Jimmy the Cannon. That's why I said interesting. I was like, that, that, that's not... You, that's not normal. All right, so... I mean, the first play, of course, is to summon the staff. That just seems like a good move. Card draw. Aha! And Blazing Tornado. Um, he hasn't taken enough to put the, the Staff of Raw into play for maximum value yet. So Blazing Tornado just seems quite strong. Raw is still very angry at Ambuscade. So that would be a consideration. Uh, Infiltrationist, once we get the damage boost going, that would be good. But uh, I'm really quite nervous about Ambuscade finding um, Glamour somewhere. Time for time to set the jail on fire. Uh, greed. Um, okay, there's two ongoing cards, so that would get rid of constant prattle and subtle diversion. Um, that's actually yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and ball lightning. Come on. There we go. Yes, you t it, the the heroes intersperse with the villains. That's kind of why I really like this because it it just shows the the chaos and disorder disorder going on in the block right now. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of... Oh, the Pitfall's a, another consideration. Um, and that is in his play area, but it's just going to take... He's just going to take two and destroy the card. I quite like the idea of just getting rid of uh, Ermin's ongoings. So here's the, uh, here's the pitch. Here's the pitch. 
That's fine. Don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll draw a card and we'll take the two. Yep. And actually, Into the Stratosphere is a very... Yeah, Ermin, Ermin's a jerk. I mean, to be fair, they're, they're all jerks, but... I mean, Proletariat's not super awful. AoE heroes do a lot of good in this situation. Yep. More Proletariats. Incidentally, I loved the, um, the Vengeance episode of uh, Letters Page because... Uh, of the detail it gave me on Proletariat. I am a huge fan of the Proletariat character. I think he's really cool. Um, so Disruptive Flechettes, that's two more ongoing cards. I kind of want to save that. Uh, Singularity, no equipment in play, so that doesn't help. Um, I quite like this as an option. And we'll see if we can hit another uh, AoE spell or card. Okay, so putting something on top of a deck seems quite strong. Something like Magman or yeah, He is kind of adorable. You're, you're not wrong there. So that's off of Sergeant Steel's deck. Uh, I mean, either way, that one's getting played. But I quite like the... The idea of just getting rid of... Or recurring... Like... Yep. Okay, so... Recurring a Magman is a consideration. Second lowest. Uh, Revolt is a consideration. Mega Gunner is also a consideration. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do Mega Gunner. Just, I mean, the, the idea of controlling the deck seems very strong. And we're also going to go ahead and play the uh, environmental exo chassis. See if we can mitigate a little bit of damage off that. Okay, here's Captain Glee over here. All right, there's the Mega Gunner that we put there in the first place. Yep, that's fine. Uh, highest HP. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, he is the leader of the Slaughterhouse Six. All right, Tachyon. Hypersonic seems real good here. Nothing can deal damage. Yay. <laughs> I'm just sitting here holding down tab because there are so many targets. Oh, I should have ordered that properly. Oops. Um, guys, I'm actually going to go back and fix that. Based on the... Uh, yeah, Mega, Mega Gunner should have... I should have targeted him first. Because he does a thing in reaction. Uh, where is he? There he is. And I knew that was coming because I put him on top of the deck. All right, there we go. Now, now it doesn't matter. Sorry, make you guys wait through that again. Tachyon puts on loud dubstep as the prison on the prison speakers. Elsewhere, a, uh, Absolute Zero is cringing. All right, there we go. No second plays yet, but we'll see what she experiments on herself. Whoa. Okay, gotta be careful. Actually experiment on herself here. Oh, that's disappointing. 
Uh, how many burst cards are in the bin? I don't think there are any. Oh, there's one. But, I mean, that's fine. Alright. Doesn't matter here. This time it actually doesn't matter, because he can't deal damage already. They doubly can't deal damage. You all have a brace of cannot do damage. It worked in Small Soldiers. Yes. Good. Dude, I have to watch that movie again. It has been way, way, way too long. Someone mentioned it at a party I was at a couple weeks ago, and I was like, oh, man. That movie was so... Gad. Good, bad. It, it just, it was, oh, gosh, so much fun. So much fun. All right, here's the blocks play, finally. A filter officer. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the non-agent target with the second lowest some damage. Uh, so, I mean, it's going to be three damage, so that's going to whack any one of these. Magman's a problem. Uh, but this guy's going to deal more, so... So filter officer, he's not a he's not a problem really. All right, now we're back to ambuscade. Okay, all right, yep, that's fine. Uh, whenever he plays a card, deal some damage. Um, but I think I've got a way to get rid of that. I got the flechettes at least. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put that as far away from from ambuscade as possible. There you go. Yep, you can't do that. Yep, it's an enticing target. He's so pretty. It's Esteban! As we say on Zach and Alex Gear Up over on the Another Letdown channel. It's been a while since we've done Gear Up. Unfortunately, the Sunday thing is just... We're, we're just super busy, and that is never fun. Alrighty. Uh, oh yeah, it has to go with the entic enticing target. Man. Alright, well, is it... Does it always go to the... Yeah, it always just goes to the enticing target. Alright, so I guess Ra's just going to whack the enticing target. Okay. Double secret, do not deal damage. All the movie references tonight, I love it. Uh, one hero ongoing... Oh, I like that. At the start of your turn, destroy this card. So that... Armin's just helping today. Thank you, Cassandra. You can't deal damage. No! You do not get to. Alright, Lightning Slash seems like a wonderful toy. Although, into the stratosphere is another consideration. So is Grievous Hailstorm. Good gravy. Oh, man. Decisions, folks. Alright, I'm gonna Grievous Hailstorm. So nothing can deal damage, so here we go! Yeah, I, I agree, Jimmy. I, I just... The the, AO, the the power of AoE effects in this particular setup just puts Grievous Hailstorm right over the top. Especially if we can get a um, Imbued Flame or anything like that. Start setting his hail on fire. Here comes Proletariat. Interesting that he can deal, still deal damage to himself. Uh, yeah, none of you can deal damage, so it doesn't matter. Oh, irreducible, right. Oh, oh, did one of those come into... Whatever. <laughs> Heh. All right. Yes, Flaming Hail is indeed quite terrifying. So what do we got for ongoings uh, banging around right now? Doesn't look like anything. Two equipment in play. Everything takes two? Yes, please. What's, what's What equipment is in play? Must be the Staff of Ra, which I've got another of. And some villain thing? Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, the Exo Chassis. Yep, that's fine. 
Is the snare an equipment? It might be. Oh boy. No, it's an ongoing. It's not equipment. I s oh, yeah, oh, that's right. We were going to... I was going to do the flechettes to... Yep, yep. Nope, you're right. I said I was going to do that, and then I didn't. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> All right, there we go. No, we're not going to do that anymore. We're done with that. Everything take two. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I probably could have ordered that better, but... Omnitron is overwhelmed by the number of targets in play right now. Yep, lost damage is lost. I'm okay with it. Um, try and hit. There we go. That's pretty good. Well, we can. Um, there are no clones to redirect to, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> Sergeant Steel. Dangerously large number of targets. Engage tranquilizing protocol. Tranquilizing protocol. Ambuscade is getting wrecked. <laughs> You still can't deal damage. <laughs> now you can. All right. Yep. So whacking the Mega Gunner here seems quite strong. Um, Sonic Vortex can oh, only hit one thing, but I really, I quite like the idea of of taking out Mega Gunner before it, it has the chance to deal any more damage. <laughs> That's all right. I knew what you meant. Yeah. All righty. Um, okay, hold the, this will get rid of hold the line. So that's quite nice. And then nimble strike. Okay, cool. So we'll do that. Hold the, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, No, the filter officer is not hurting anything at this moment. All right. Um, I need to look at Sergeant Steele's play area quickly. It's just him. Sweet. Uh, so... Yeah, I really don't want Glamour to come out really don't want Glamour to come out right now. Proletariat, yeah, probably the right choice, but... Ambuscade can't deal damage! Yay! <laughs> Ambuscade is not having a good day. Really? Nobody in the block can help me? Dommage. Ha! Yep, that'll happen. Yeah. Well, he I remember he didn't organize it. He's just trying to take advantage of it. Uh, Flame Spike actually seems quite good here. That allows me to use both of these. Ambuscade had one job and you're ruining it for him. Alright, so we'll level that at Ambuscade. Ambuscade flips. But he plays out a bunch of stuff. Ah, there's Glamour. Yeah.
Alright, so Glamour can't deal damage, or can't be dealt damage by... Wait, the first time a Nemesis card would be dealt damage by a hero target each turn. Redirect that damage to the hero target with the highest hit points. If Tachyon is active in the game, hero cards cannot deal redirect damage. So the, fir the first time a Nemesis would be dealt damage each turn. Redirect that damage. So we're going to have to just kind of ignore Glamour, I think. Ugh. Yikes. All right, well, here we go. Uh, yeah, oh, actually, that, you're right. Okay, all right, Jimmy, Jimmy's got a point here. We could just, you know, hit Glamour for a tiny amount of damage and then just like go ham with a lightspeed barrage or something stupid like that. Nope, we're going to proletariat. So we're gonna do some interesting stuff. Yeah, not everything is a nemesis, so there's, I mean, there, there's another one, of course, but, yep. Um, that, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, he's not reducing anything. I guess we're gonna go with Tempest. The other thing that Tempest can Tempest can go over to Healy mode. Yeah. So aha! Here we go. Into the stratosphere can take away uh, glamour. Because she can't get played again, unless uh, if he's incapacitated. If a nemesis was, would leave the play area, it's removed from the game. <laughs> Into the stratosphere, Glamour! See ya! Bye bye <laughs> That turns everything right back on! Alright, uh, I don't see anything that's going to redirect, so... I'm going nuts! Thank you, come again. Proletariat. Okay, yep, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, highest HP, Omnitron, that's fine. Um... Disruptive takes out defensive formation. Singularity. It's one equipment in play right now. It's the Staff of Ra. One target. E sorry, everything one damage. That seems quite good. Uh, but is there a better way to do it? That actually doesn't seem like the worst. Actually, oh no. Disruptive flechettes just seems better here. Yep, we'll get rid of that. We are not going to destroy a second card. And everything's going to take two. See ya. Oh, that's true. I may have just tabbed through it, Technomagus. It's entirely plausible. Um, so, I'm actually going to going to look through look at Ra's deck here. Um that's I'm just gonna put it into play because why not because it did it did display that um, Desert Eagle was banging right it was uh, removed so Sergeant Steel 
still giggling mirth mirthfully. Mirthfully? Is that a word? Okay, hold the line, is back. Alrighty. So, HUD goggles. What is Lightspeed Barrage at? Three? That's not good enough. Um... So I'm going to HUD Goggles and Synaptic Interruption. Check the Lightning Bolt. Yes, good call. That's not helpful. Doesn't. I'm not worried about it. Alright, we got Fleet of Foot. That'll draw us a card. Give us an extra card play. Nice, nice. More AoE. Um, oh, maybe. I. Yeah, you can. I don't know. Whatever. Um... There's still only three burst cards in there. I'm just going to do that. And then a target. So, Proletariat. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, you did, Jimmy. I, I'm probably just doing something silly. It might be just because it's Tachyon's turn and she has some weird, like, stuff going on. Oh, no, it doesn't. Huh. Imprisoned Rogue. There goes Proletariat. Thank you, imprison uh, block people. Ray Manta's removed from the game. Here's Ambuscade. Absolutely nothing! <laughs> um, Solar Flare can probably just take out something. Start by summoning staff, because the extra card could be relevant. Come on, get in there. Sure isn't. Well, actually. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad. Living Con Flag. Level some damage at Ermin. Looks like Glamour was properly removed from the game. Here comes the Blazing Tornado. Um, at Ermin. He's just going to whack Ermin here. Or move toward whacking Ermin. Equity. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Yep, yep, yep. Have hair, don't care. Alrighty. Um, so, if I shackles up, or actually if I lightning slash, I can just do this. And then Hailstorm for a bit. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Oh, see, that would have been nice to turn ago. Brings us to Proletariat, who is already in capped. Oh, that's, that's really annoying. <laughs> I don't think we're even going to get to, to Tachyon's turn, though. If we do, it'll be kind of surprising. Um, reset. Uh, yeah. uh, there are two equipments. Each. Two damage. Yep, got it. Singularity coming in. 
we're going to get rid of these equipment cards. Draw and play is great, but when you can just do this, <laughs> go for the inevitable. And ladies and gentlemen, we win. And by the way, I love what I've written here. So here we go. Ambuscade is sitting behind bars at the block. His mask hangs on a hook across the hall. A lock of blonde hair is hanging in front of his face. He reaches up and moves it out of the way. Merde. And that's it. That's uh, that. That's it. So now, of course, our heroes are stuck at the block, um, and their way home was not as uneventful as it could have been. They didn't have a ship, first of all, and uh, none of them are particularly good pilot. However, lurking in the shadows is an extra aid to their cause. For the backup story tonight, we will introduce a fifth character. Now, I don't have all the time in the world tonight, so I do. Uh, I am going to make a request that you... Uh, keep it rather easy uh, but I will leave the backup story villain to you folks so if anybody has any suggestions I will entertain them post below Omni just recycles Ra's stuff into a death beam. <laughs> yeah. Angry Paul. Oh, dear. I mean, I guess that does make sense, but we are fighting in the time cataclysm. That could be rough. <sighs> all right. All right. I've only got 15 minutes. It makes sense. Let's, let's do Angry Paul. In the time cataclysm, they, of course, find Iron Legacy. Oh, I'm seeing votes for Kismet. Um, yeah, that would make sense, but they, I, I'm gonna, I, I saw Angry Paul first. Ah, oh, man. All right, next vote takes it. Angry Paul or Kismet? Because I love fighting Kismet. Okay, Kismet it is. We will do Angry Paul soon. Uh, by the way, Knife is, of course, the uh, character lurking in the shadows, ready to guide our heroes through the Time Cataclysm and home. So Ra is going to start out with Drawn to the Flame, Scor Scorched Earth, Summon Staff, and the Staff of Ra. I know how we're starting. Uh, Inhuman Tempest, starting with Aquatic Correspondence, Ball Lightning, Chain Lightning, and Localized Hurricane. Omnitron X, Electro Deployment Unit, Innervation Ray, Technological Advancement, and one more Technological Advancement for a Brace. Uh, super Scientific Tachyon, Accelerated Assault, HUD Goggles, Nimble Strike, and Quick Insight. And Knife, joining the fray, Amplified Combatant, Focusing Conduit Blade, Kinetic Neutralizer, and Primed Punch. Uh, correct. Kismet's unlocks are not known yet. Not known. Alright, there's the Talisman. Everybody will deal, take take their lumps. How fast can we do 70, folks? How fast can we do 70? Reveal the top six cards of the villain deck. A any jinxes are coming into play. Shake your arm. 
Um, put that next to Omnitron. Maybe not ideal, but... Oh, well, that's got Tachyon in the picture, so... No choice there. Gotta make the flavorful play. Alright, one each player discards card. Lois takes two. He will discard Scorched Earth. I said Scorched Earth! Thank you. Uh, localized Hurricane. One of the Brace. Got a Burst card? Yeah, we do. Um, it'll be that one. Uh, okay, I gotta remind myself what knife does. Three targets, one melee, and one energy. Increased damage dealt. Plane equipment. Increased damage dealt. Uh, highest HP, prime punch. We're gonna discard that. Ouch. All right, it's on. As per usual, when we have the summon staff in hand, we summon staff. Imbued fire, that's a nice pickup. <laughs> Roll a die on a 20, she unlocks. Not max value off the staff here, but uh, close. Oh, actually, that might have been max. Watch me not look at what I'm doing. And he's going to start pounding away here. Um, Ball Lightning seems slightly stronger here. Oh my goodness. Sound being weird again. Uh, okay, let's get rid of some Jinxes. I hadn't thought of that logic gate, but it could be. That could be the case. Someone ask John. Hashtag ask John. Um, she's dealing what? Like psychic damage? Yeah. So let's advance. Uh, which one deal re reduces psychic? That's not it. That's not it. Uh, yep, there we go. Temporal Shielding, and she's in the picture, so that makes perfect sense. Watch us play cards. Yeah, it's Electroshock. Well, Omnitron certainly thinks it's Electroshock Therapy. Uh, oh, sorry. Having a brain fart. Uh, well, absolutely play that. That seems great. Okay, okay. Imbued fire, coming in. Coming in hot. See what I did there? Coming in hot. It's a terrible joke. I should probably be smacked. Alright, Tachyon. HUD goggles first. Always. Quick insight seems... We are fighting Kismet. Um, the original idea was to fight Angry Paul, Iron Legacy, but uh, Kismet, leaving the block, it seemed kind of flavorful that Kismet would try and follow us through the uh, open portal into the Time Cataclysm. So we're going with that instead. Um, discard a couple cards. Pushing, uh, sorry, sorry, pushing the limits. And this is a burst card. So we'll get rid of that too. And we'll experiment on herself. Yep. Sorry, guys. Going away. And uh, Jimmy Knife is attempting to lead them out of the block. Um, that seems strong. That's really nice. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do the Focusing Conduit Blade. I should probably look at her base power. Agent Huntley deals 
two energy damage. Uh, I don't want to destroy that yet. So we'll go ahead and do that. Come on. Okay, all right, rift in time. Charging Triceratops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not gonna be dealing anything next turn. Yeah. It's a bummer. But it's okay, because the, the, the imbued fire just, like overall deals enough that, oh, that's rude. Ugh. Because I was playing all the cards here. Ugh. Wow. Goat unlucky. Alright, here we go. Let's see. Um, Flesh does what? That might be our play here. Um, no environment cards in play. Yeah. There's no villain ongoings in play. So I guess Flesh of the Sun God is indeed coming out. Can't hurt. And we will go ahead and get big. Alrighty. Um, chain Lightning is a, is a consideration. But Aquatic Correspondence, I love those those words. Draw three cards. Some happy, happy words. Okay, okay, okay. Yep, good. Grievous Hailstorm, getting ready. But we'll start with Squall. Excuse me. All right, electro deployment unit seems really good, but also innervation ray. I'm gonna go ahead and innervation ray. See if we can get, see if we can't get that off. Get that to do work for us here. Um, noting what people have in their hands, I'm gonna continue to give that to raw. Yeah, no, that's that's quite good. Flame barrier. Fire rains from the heavens, yeah. I mean, I kind of consider, and, and maybe Christopher or Adam will prove me wrong, or tell me I'm wrong at some point. They often do. Um, that Time Cataclysm is sort of just this weird, like, place between worlds. I know, it, like, it's a bunch of things coming together, but I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and Hypersonic Assault. I like the idea of things not being able to deal damage. Uh, and we do have a second card play. Um, so it's three damage or one and draw a card. I like that. I do value draw a card higher than... stuff. Higher than uh, dealing damage, believe it or not. Um, yep, we'll continue to experiment on Tachyon. Uh, oh, Abrasive Lightspeed Barrage. Okay, well, I mean, not the best use of a Lightspeed Barrage, but we'll take it. Recover from that, jerk! Ooh, nice! Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about the talisman right now. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a wreck, wrecking uppercut. And we will continue to energy lance, or fire lance, I guess in this case. 
Uh, the Talisman, if you would like to know. As soon as I can get the game to stop running in autopilot. Come on, environment, do your thing. Alright. Surprise shopping trip is the anomaly that, com anomaly that comes into play. Come on. Yep. Alright. The Talisman. When flipped to the side, restore the... Uh, so, the card is indestructible. Increased damage dealt by Kismet by X, where the X is the number of Jinxes. So, that's uh, that's what's going on with that. Okay, that's caps locked on tab. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okie dokie. So, the game plan is to continue going ham. Um... There is one ongoing card. Everything takes one. I mean, that's not nothing. Oh, foolish sound problem. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm not going to bother to correct it this late in the stream. I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and... Well, okay, I'm going to play Drawn to the Flame. Spike shows up on the block looking for... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, Spite shows up on the block looking for drugs in the fire. Rude. But now we have the talisman, which uh, allows some deck manipulation. Legitimately, I don't think I'm going to use a whole lot of it. It's just going to kind of sit in our play area. Well, we level damage a Kismet. Actually, you know what? I I think I am going to go ahead and fix this real quick. One moment. Just stare at my f ugly face for a minute. Come on, Steam. Catch up. I don't know why it does this. It's probably updating. Really should submit a bug report to John. Come on. He was looking for drugs in all the wrong places. <laughs> yeah, he probably was. Hashtag blame John. <laughs> Come on, Steam. Or blame Steam. Yeah, uh, both. Hashtag blame Valve. Blame Gabe Newell. <laughs> Who else can we blame? Blame Ambuscade? He's in jail. <laughs> ah, come on. Alright. Desperate times, des desperate measures. I have an apple. I can do this. Bye bye, Steam. All right, we'll try launching it again. <laughs> yep, it needed to update. We were right. Blame Steam. Yep, connect my account, do your thing. And right back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, it wanted to give me an advertisement for the Steam summer sale. Come on. And we're back. Okay. <sighs> Foolish steam. Hate it so bad. Alrighty. So, I believe last turn we agreed that we were either going to chain lightning, which is not really worth it, or... Grievous Hailstorm. Now, Spite's, sho Spite's Shopping Strip, now on Steam. Sh shopping Strip? Oy, oy, oy. Spite is just going ham. Now, 
never blame the Gaben. Uh, 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 Omnitron. <laughs> Please. Um, I guess it's Tempest. Knight, uh, Tachyon. Come on. There we go. Might help if I click the right thing. This is what a lab raid looks like from the inside. Um, well. Another renovation raid. How's that sound? Yeah, 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 yeah. At least Spite's killing, like, hitting everything. He's just, like, going crazy. He, he just, he just wants his stuff. Oh, that's a bummer. Alright, Tachyon. She can't Sucker Punch, but she can Hypersonic Assault again. Oh, I'm sure they're not. But... A guy can dream, Jimmy. A guy can dream. Alright, she's got the talisman back. Now we're playing football with the talisman. Um, but we are going to go ahead and Sonic Vortex. Yeah, I know, right? I wish I wish this was a was a, uh, I wish this was a target. Oh yeah. Okay. She's gonna take an additional four. Boom. Yep, that's fine. <laughs> uh, we'll stop dealing damage there. Cause it's time to make an kind of time to do an experiment on this bizarre environment. Right? That was disappointing. Tachyon learns nothing from her experiment. Alright, Knife, what do you got for us? Primed Punch? Nah. Uh, overcharge Null Shield. Reduce damage dealt to Knife by the villain target with the highest HP by one. Just draw two cards to destroy this. Uh, that That's not nothing. Three targets, one melee, and one energy damage. Well, that would bring the talisman back to us. Sure. Why not? <laughs> nice, Logic 8. I hadn't even thought of that. You're absolutely correct. That's really funny. Uh, that's enough. Is it really, though? Like... Uh, it doesn't show it in the artwork, but it absolutely... I mean, it has to be. Right? The Sun God commands it. So now we get rid of this, not rid of Spite's shopping trip. All right, another rift in time. Yep, that's fine. Um, end of the environment turn. One player may discard their hand to destroy this card. Uh, who should? Who would like to discard their hand? Hmm, I think Tachyon. Keep running. The sun god commands it. Alrighty. <laughs> Kismet just gets angry. That's all that happens. I apologize on behalf of the neighbors. They have been setting off fireworks for the last several days, and it's driving my cats absolutely insane. Uh, one target. Everything one damage. Alright, sure. Why not? Yeah, she looks cranky. Doesn't look happy at all. Especially considering she knows she's going to lose. All right, Tempest, finish her off. What do you got for us? Chain Lightning? Sounds good. Chain 
Chain Lightning. Um, don't really care. July equals month of really loud things. Yep. And we will go ahead and finish her off with a Grievous Hailstorm. It's so grievous. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We win again. Yeah. So they send her back through the through the portal, straight back to the block. Our heroes make it safely back to Earth. With knife in tow, safely with them. And the heroes have had a red letter day. I really hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast of Tales from the Archive on Handelabra Games. If you like what you saw here, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share our channel on social media and in person. You can follow Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as Handelabra Games on Twitch. If you want to see more content from me, including the Adjacent Hex podcast and the occasional sketch comedy video, as well as just some gaming stuff and other cool things, facebook.com forward slash another letdown is the place to be for that. If you have story submissions for me to tackle or just want to say hi, hit me up on Twitter. My name is at D-E-N-O-N-C-Z-D, and I swear that I will bring a suggestion form to the ball game at some point. I've just been really busy and I haven't had a chance to make it yet. I also do live streams of other video games sometimes on my team's channel, twitch.tv forward slash another letdown. Sentinels of the Multiverse is currently available for iOS, Android, and PC, Mac, and Linux via Steam, and is always available in good old-fashioned cardboard and ink. You can get the game and more information at sentinelsdigital.com. As always, thank you ever so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful 4th of July, everybody. Uh, think think legacy as you eat your... Uh, what, what do people eat on the 4th of July? I don't even know. Uh, potato salad and burgers? Sure. Uh, and I will talk to you next week.